To help you improve your Catan game in under 8 minutes, I've put together a placement puzzle based on the 2018 World Championship game. We can learn a lot from these highly ranked players, both good and bad strategies. Now you can find out how you match up against them, here on Legendary Tactics. Player's trajectory is heavily defined by their first placements. Remember the guiding rules when you choose. Number one, try for one of every resource so you don't get shut out. Number two, no wheat equals defeat. This naturally follows the first tip. Number three, go for a variety of numbers so unlucky rolls won't lock you down. Number four, you should generally point your roads to the outside of the map where you can win a race to a favorable port and avoid the big cluster fudge in the middle of the map. Number five, maximize your pips by going for the five, six, eight, and nine. Number six, figure out what your likely second choice will be to see if you'll get a balanced build. Do this by narrowing down the best options on the board for your opponent's specific needs, assuming that they're skilled players and that they'll make reasonable choices. Number seven, pay attention to what resources are scarce and focus on those first. All right, let's start. If you haven't tried my Canadian or European Championship placement puzzles, I'll put the link at the top. They're great practice if you want to continue to improve your skills at these initial placements. This game, played in Germany, is based on the World Championship from 2018. If you hang around until the end, I'll also show you what the final board for this game looked like, and you can make a prediction about whose initial placement led to a final victory. All right, let's talk about the players. So first position went to the blue player. That was the Colombian. Second placement went to the white player from Denmark. Third was the orange player from Mexico. And fourth went to the German player playing as red. And this is what the board looked like. I'll give you 10 seconds to take a look at the board before you make each decision about where you would go and which way you would point your road. So let's start with the blue player. And if you need more time, just hit the space bar to pause the video until you make your own decision. The blue player chooses the 8 ore, the 10 and the 5 brick. He points towards the brick port. This is a nice synergy for the strongest brick producer on the board. There isn't a lot of brick available, so this choice also forces the other players to really look at where they'll be getting their brick from. Take 10 seconds to follow up with white's first play. Where do you place? So white opts for the four sheep, eight ore, and 10 wheat. That's a nice distribution of resources and numbers. He points towards the sheep port, likely noticing that there are a lot of sheep available on this board. He sets himself up with solid wheat potential with the 10. Now choose the placement for orange. If you enjoy this kind of puzzle, also be sure to stab the like button during the next 10 seconds. Orange goes for the strong 8 ore, 4 wheat, and 3 sheep placement. He's unfazed by the absence of brick, concentrating instead on pairing ore and wheat. He's set up to buy development cards, and he points his road towards the 11 ore. He seems quite keen on maximizing his wheat and ore production with the potential to hit the wheat port. So next up is red. Where would you place their settlements? And remember that as the fourth player, you get back-to-back -back selections in the order you place them in matters, if you're trying to get a road down right away, for instance. So you could choose to think about this as choosing the fifth pick before the fourth pick. 10 seconds. Red decides to take the five and nine wood and also the six sheep. So he's favoring the odds of getting strong production. He points his road towards the 12 brick. Now one downside to this choice is that he's heading for the ore and knowing that his next pick is nowhere near this ore, he'll be limited, with the 11 ore being his only viable source, and that's also assuming that he can beat Orange to the punch there. If you're this far into the video, perhaps it's time to join our channel by subscribing now. We got plenty of other strategy videos to help you improve your game. All right, take 10 seconds for Red's second pick. So he chooses to go on the 11 sheep, 9 wheat, and 10 brick. He points his road towards the 2 wood. Now it's a little bit curious that he didn't take a wood brick pair right off the hop. That is one of the common opening strategies to get that race. But perhaps he doesn't think that it's worth racing blue for the brick port. That is a bit of a risky strategy and it can cause other players to want to target you to try to steal that opening resource from you if they happen to get a roll that uh, favors the robber. So do you see any better options here for red? Let me know in the comments. 
Now it's time to make your second placement for orange. Orange decides to place on the 9 and 3 wheat, as well as the 6 wood. He's shut out of brick, but he's got piles of wheat with future potential for wheat, and even the possibility of getting the wheat port if Red doesn't get any funny ideas. With lots of wheat, he won't face defeat. He aims the road to the edge of the board, and he sets himself up for a 3 to 1 port. Next up is White. Go ahead and make your choice. This one was one of those moments in high level play where the reaction from the audience was palpable. White chose to take the 9 wood and 12 brick on the ore port, pointing his road back towards the 6 sheep. This is definitely not what Red wants to see. However, it gets White a weak source of brick and also one of every resource. White is in a low income position here with a 10, 4, 9, and 12. However, there's risky potential for them to get a strong ore engine going on that port. His philosophy seems to be go hard or go home. There's definitely a lot that can go wrong here. It's a really risky option, but on to the final pick for blue. You have 10 seconds. We have yet again another slightly odd pick here. Blue decided to go on the 12 brick, 6 sheep, and 11 ore, pointing their road inward towards the 3 sheep. This really gets into the middle of the scrum and it messes up both white and red's plans. But remember that also sets you up to be adversarial with both of those players because they're coming to this game thinking that you've hosed them and try to get a deal with players who think you've screwed them over. So it could possibly impact Orange to play here as well. So this is a very antagonistic placement. There was a much safer option available, but it also means that Blue has no wheat and you know what that means. So the much safer pick would have been the five wood, 10 wheat and the four and 11 sheep with five wood. Overall, this seems like a poor pick. I wonder if you agree. Uh, do you think this was a high pressure mistake? If you haven't had the chance to see it yet for a more detailed analysis of these decisions, check out Delighted's in-depth analysis of these choices. I'll link to it in the description. He offers a thorough breakdown for each of these choices. But just before you go, it's often fun to take a look at how this board evolved and who the winner was. So now all the placements are done, take a moment to assess who you think ended up with the best placements and who you think will win this game and what strategy they'll use. So this is what the final board looked like. As you can see, most players opted to focus their game entirely around a single initial placement other than red, and the orange player from Mexico won the game with a strong or wheat combination scoring 8 points from cities alone. Thanks for watching, and try my other placement puzzles if you enjoyed interacting with this one. Thanks for your time.